Hey guys, we're at the field today and I came out to Maiden, the 67 inch laser and the M4, but the wind is pretty bad today. So I've decided discretion is the better part of valor and I've opted not to Maiden either one of them today. And it's not because I don't think the plane could handle it. I'm sure the plane could, but it's a Maiden. So you just don't know what you're getting. You don't know if the flight characteristics are due to something with your setup or something with the wind. So for that reason, today's just not a good day to Maiden. Instead, we're gonna take this little guy out and we're gonna talk about the use case for wind rejection stabilizer. This is a 48 inch Skywing laser and it's got a stabilizer inside that I use for wind rejection mode. And Dave's gonna point over at the flag and show you what we're talking about with the wind. It is kind of nasty today. So what I wanna do is show you guys why I like to use a wind rejection stabilizer on my planes. All right, we're gonna take the 48 inch laser. This is a Skywing plane. This is a foam and balsa hybrid plane. The wind is just kind of nasty today, but I thought I'd show you why I use a wind rejection stabilizer in a small plane like this. So all I'm gonna use for the flight today is the wind rejection only, that's it. We're just gonna go fly around and goof off a little bit. The wind is coming from my right, so I'm gonna take off left to right, and here we go. Turn the plane into the wind a little bit because turning it around is just fruitless exercise at this point. And here we go, ready to take off. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some flybys so the guys can get it on camera. I'm just gonna do a flyby and I'm gonna show you what it's like with the wind rejection turned off. So that's off. And you can see, look at the wings. You see the wings just kind of knocking around? That's wind. That's not me doing that, that's the wind. So that was kind of hands off. Now I'm gonna add the wind rejection in and there it is. Now I've got wind rejection on. I'll do another flyby so the guys can see it. I got Fred on one camera and Dave on another. We have a backup just in case we lost another plane. But there you go. There's the case for wind rejection right there. Look how stable that is. I'm not doing that. My hands are basically off the controls. Now keep in mind, that's not auto level mode. That's not what this is. All this does is deals with uncommanded movement. The next thing I'm gonna do is a landing, just so you can see, I'm gonna do a landing without, here's without, and I'm gonna do one with, just so you can see. Now, I always say, I don't, look at that. I don't fly a plane unless I can land it without a stabilizer, right? If I can't land it without a stabilizer, I don't fly it. That's without wind rejection. Now I'm gonna turn the wind rejection on, take off again, and we're gonna do the same thing, just a real simple landing. And you'll see the difference that the wind rejection makes in helping keep the wings level and keeping you on your glide slope. So there we go, wind rejection's on. All I'm doing right now is managing a little bit of throttle and just that's about it, just a little bit of throttle. And that's wind rejection. What, what I constantly say about wind rejection is that I use it to reduce my workload. I don't use it as a crutch in order for me to be able to fly. Now, that said, I know some of you just don't have the help or the experience. In that case, go ahead and use it, right? The problem I have with uh, stabilizers as a learning tool overall though, is they can teach you bad habits. Let me give you an example of what I mean by bad habits. So I'm gonna take off and I'm gonna put auto level on right now. So there's auto level. Now in order to make a turn to the left, I have to turn my stick to the left and hold it. That's not the way an airplane normally flies. Right now on a normal airplane, my stick is all the way to the left. A normal airplane would be doing a roll. This one's only doing a turn. And that's what I mean about teaching you bad habits. So when you just use wind rejection, which is what I'm in now, you don't have bad habits because if I do the same thing with the stick, there's the roll, you see? I did the full roll. So that's just wind rejection. That does not teach you bad habits. There is a big difference between the two. All right, one more landing with the wind rejection on and we'll wrap this video up. By the way, I didn't get fired. No, after, we'll never fire Dave. After the crash, I'm on probation though. Yeah. yeah. Probation. <laughs> there's, a, there's been a hold placed on his paycheck. <laughs> yeah, I'm on probation. <laughs> All right, guys, that's a stabilized landing. You can see the wind still got a little bit out of sorts, but it, the thing about it was it wasn't a constant correction, and that's the problem with this kind of wind. You're constantly fighting with the plane. I'll get asked what stabilizer. 
I've been flying S6Rs for a long time. They're very good. I also like the Hobby Eagle uh, A3 Super line. So the A3 Super 2, Super 3, and Super 4 are all excellent. So any of them will work, and I'm sure there are plenty of others. I don't mean to be exclusionary here. That's not my point. I'm just saying these are the ones that I have experience with, and I do like, uh, for example, I do like the, uh, the S6R, and I like that Hobby Eagle quite a bit. Just makes flying a lot easier on the pilot. All right, guys, if you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. <laughs> YouTube should be recommending another video for you right about now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hasta la vista, gentlemen. Later, folks. Yeah, you're going to put that one on the video. <laughs>